Hello, I'm W.L. McCoy. Some call me the Old Kentuckian. Come with me as I take a journey through the early days of Kentucky, and we'll explore a little bit about the history of the dark and the bloody ground. The Long Hunters, Daniel Boone, Simon Kitten, but there were others. The Skaggs Brothers, the Graham Brothers. They were all here very early on. We'll talk about Benjamin Lynn and Lynn Camp Creek and the hunts. So come with me now as we journey through the old Kentucky. I think you'll enjoy it. Walking along the old buffalo trace, you can almost hear the lumbering beasts as they trotted along here many uh, years ago. I'm uh, uh, standing in the middle of a remnant of an ancient buffalo trace here in Hart County, Kentucky. On Actually, it's my property, and uh, it I think it had been used possibly as a uh, as a wagon trail many of the uh, the early settlers would use these old traces uh, as travel corridors and they would have horses and buggies that would go along here but uh, the way that uh, this is shaped I believe, do believe that it is an ancient uh, buffalo trace or wild game trail uh, the soil here in this part of Hart County is very sandy and uh, it would lend itself to uh, quite a bit of uh, erosion from the foot traffic of the, the animals that were here at that time. Buffalo, deer, elk, uh, bear. In fact, uh, within the last couple of days there have been uh, uh, two black bear that have been photographed not too far from here. Um, one only just a few miles down the road here, so uh, we could still have a few black bears come through here on occasion. Um, the property uh, still contains a large number of white-tailed deer and wild turkey. As you can see, I picked this up on the way coming in here. Um, the buffalo traces uh, in Kentucky where, uh, where the buffaloes would travel between feeding grounds and uh, water sources and uh, salt licks. We're going to look at a, a mineral lick here shortly, but <clears throat> to give you kind of an idea of where this buffalo trace stands in uh, its geological location here in Kentucky, if you go directly south, just a few miles, you have the Green River, which was an important hunting uh, territory for the early long hunters here in Kentucky. In fact, uh, the Knox long hunter camp is uh, in that direction, uh, probably about 20-25 uh, miles across there. Um, it's not not actually too far, and I would uh, almost think that uh, the early long hunters were actually walking on this this property back in those days the uh, just a couple of hollows over uh, you have the original uh, Louisville to Nashville turnpike uh, which uh, it's been moved a couple of times but it's now uh, known as highway 31 
but uh, the uh, the road over here is part of what they call the the Jackson Turnpike, and uh, uh, in some places when, when we have a heavy rain, you can still find the old cobblestones that were laid here uh, prior to the Civil War, but that highway went from uh, Louisville to Nashville. Uh, you would have had Mansker Station, you would have arrived at Mansker Station before you got to Fort Nashboro if you continued south here, crossing the Green River and keep going around Bowling Green and down that direction. Um, the Skaggs Trace uh, that came through Crab Orchard would be east of here and uh, it kind of came along till it hit the Green River and then meandered on along and eventually ended up in, in Louisville. Uh, the Boone Trace uh, is farther east. Uh, it forked off of the, the Wilderness Road. Skaggs Trace took a left and went to Louisville. Uh, the Boone Trace uh, forked to the right and went up to Boonesboro. And that's quite a few miles uh, east of here, but we're still uh, within uh, the vicinity of it. Uh, and all of these old uh, pioneer traces were, uh, they followed uh, the buffalo traces, and, and it's kind of a highway in the wilderness, so to speak. Um, the uh, Knox camp, the Long Hunter camp, uh, said is in Greene County, which the Greene County line is only just a few miles east of here. Um, and in one of my previous episodes, uh, this property is on the headwaters of Lynn Camp Creek, which uh, is the campsite of Benjamin Lynn, uh, one of the early uh, long hunters and explorers into this part of the country. Um, my ancestor was Charles Skaggs, one of the Skaggs Long Hunter brothers. And the Skaggs farm where he settled in Greene County is only just a few miles from here uh, on Brush Creek. Uh, it wouldn't take you very on horseback, it might take you a half a day to get over there, but it's only maybe, uh, I would say, 10 or 15 miles from here. It's not very far. And a lot of the Skaggs family, the descendants of Charles, all lived uh, very closely here. Uh, so uh, you see a lot of that here. So I just wanted to show you uh, what the remnants of uh, an actual buffalo trace look like. And you can tell. Uh, a lot of traffic in here to dig this out into kind of a bowl shape and I still have a lot of deer trails on the property but they're not nearly as large uh, uh, a bison an American bison or a buffalo was many times larger than a white-tailed deer and they uh, would travel by the hundreds so you can imagine Hundreds of buffaloes coming through here over hundreds of years would uh, definitely wear the soil down deep. You can catch that that bowl shape coming right through there. That's kind of an interesting feature, uh, something that uh, you might look for in in the woods when you're out uh, doing your scouts. But I wanted to show you that today to kind of give you an idea of what the, the old buffalo traces look like. Of course, uh, there haven't been any buffalo in here for years, and, and the leaves have accumulated. But even so, um, the ditch, the wear and tear on the land is still evident after all these many uh, years from when the buffalo came into this part of the country. One more thing that I might add is that uh, uh, south of here you have Barron County, uh, the next county down, and it's uh, named because of the Barrens. And uh, there was a lot of uh, grassland, and it, it's a uh, question that possibly the natives would burn it periodically to clear away the trees from growing in there so that the grasslands and, uh, would make a uh, feeding area for the wildlife to come into and it would make an ideal hunting spot. And, uh, but that's just uh, south of Hart County here, not too far and it would be, would be the direction that the Buffalo Trace would take you. They'd go down across the Green River, and keep on going down into their feeding grounds. 
So uh, we're going to move over to a mineral lick and we'll talk about that for just a minute. Okay, um, I'm in a uh, man-made mineral lick sitting down here and it's rather large. Um, I started this lick probably over 20 years ago <coughs> by putting in minerals that uh, I felt would help uh, sustain my deer herd and other wildlife that come into the area and they have used it uh, quite readily. You can see they've dug it out. At one time uh, it was just even with the top of the ground here and they've probably come down at least 18 inches or deeper uh, getting to the minerals. Um, I use a, a, a combination of uh, salt trace minerals, uh, um, calcium, um, potassium, uh, and put it in here. The rain comes in, it soaks it into the ground, and the, uh, the deer will come in here and lick the soil. Much the same as what uh, the, uh, the animals, the buffalo, the elk, the deer, would do in the early days when they would go into the salt licks. Now, uh, Kentucky uh, has uh, a lot of limestone rock. And through the process of rain coming, going through the soil, leaching through that limestone rock, it would pick up traces of salt. Then, uh, it would come out in the springs and, and, and would go out into the soil. The water it would evaporate and leave the trace minerals. And over thousands and thousands of years, this process, that evaporation of the, uh, the limestone water that carried the trace elements of the salt and minerals, that would uh, concentrate in certain areas. And uh, because of this concentration, uh, the wildlife would seek out the salt. Uh, that was how they would get their, their minerals uh, for their growth. And uh, especially uh, the calcium is good for milk production uh, because lactating uh, mothers would need that calcium to build up their bones and have in the milk so that the young uh, would be able to grow. And flourish. So uh, this is a, like I said, I made this mineral lick, but your salt licks, uh, like blue licks, where uh, the battle at blue licks uh, occurred, that was a large, large salt lick up in northern Kentucky, and there were other licks throughout the whole state. Um, this area of Hart County has a lot of iron in the soil and, uh, and other minerals. It doesn't have as much of uh, the the limestone in in this area but south of here you know you have Mammoth Cave and there's a lot of limestone the cave was leached out uh, uh, from the limestones there at Mammoth Cave and um, you get the idea of, of how the water action over thousands and thousands of years would take out that that limestone and then it would be deposited in the soil over time and leave the salts so uh, you can see there's lots of tracks in here. This is an established lick now. It's been here for years and years. The deer and the other wildlife, they know where it is and they come to it on a daily basis. So uh, thank you and we'll see you in the next episode. I just want to point out some of the uh, the tracks where the deer come in here to this mineral lick. And these are all deer tracks from when 
when it was wet. And I think I see some, uh, there's some coyote tracks right there. But they're using this uh, mineral lick pretty heavily. Okay, here, this is uh, definitely some type of a dog track. And I ex expect there's probably um, a coyote, because I do know I have coyotes that run in here quite frequently. So I suspect that that's uh, a coyote came in here to inspect the mineral lick and uh, maybe looking for young fawns. The, fawn, the deer are birthing their babies right now and coyotes are pretty hard on them. Okay, um, this is uh, clover and uh, even though this is a type of white clover, um, when the early explorers came into Kentucky, there were a couple of wild varieties that they called buffalo clover. They're very similar to this. You have to really know your clovers to, to tell the difference. But um, the wildlife would utilize that clover. Clover is very uh, nutritious, and it's uh, high in protein. So uh, you would find that also as an attractant to the uh, buffalo and the other uh, the game herds here in Kentucky, so keep an eye out for your clovers when you're out on your hunt, because it's a likely spot that that wildlife would be coming in there to feed on those clovers.